It's 12th of August, 2012. I'm Bernie Goldbach in my back garden. I'm looking at Jim Gillum and the Sunday Papers. I'm an American with some, some attitude about technology and culture and stuff. In my back garden watching cats and birds and rain fly overhead. Interesting article in the Financial Times Weekend magazine. I recommend purchasing the FT this weekend for some good read. Valley of Gods, the cover story, talks about what you're going to find in the way of spirituality in Silicon Valley. God is not impressed with your status update. He's impressed with what lies beneath the pretense. Chuck DeGroat, pastor of the City Church of San Francisco, writes, quite a few people in um, books and magazines I read about startups that are, that are going to Buddhist or evangelical Christian services there in the uh, San Jose area. Pretty interesting story. Doubly interesting. His rooms with no view beneath the streets of Beijing, China's low-income workers squash into tiny living spaces. Can you imagine living without um, any kind of external light, just incandescent or fluorescent lights overhead? This is what happens when you move from the farms to the factories of the large cities. It's not just Beijing, I'm sure it's everywhere else in China. Excellent read. FT Magazine, FT.com stroke magazine. Front page Sunday Times is the Golden Girl, Cassius Bray, that's Kay Taylor. The Irish Games equal the best games, Metal Hall. A uh, great story by John Burns about how Ireland stepped up, continues to box about its weight, you know. John Joe Nevin, silver medalist. Story there, the backstory there, Siobhan McGuire writes about it. His family was banned from watching him uh, achieve his success in hometown pubs. Uh, he, he's a traveler. There's some uh, rampant prejudice against travelers throughout Ireland. Oops, suffered that. Suffered that same shame. Of, uh, that prejudice. It's not going to go away carrying so little metal either. It's just a long prejudice. Inside the paper, the Golden Girl would hit the jackpot. Many people speculating about Katie, sponsorship for cars, dog food, um, and other things. How to eat like she does or eat like an Olympic athlete. This advice comes from sports nutritionist Gavin Allison. Talking about exercise before breakfast or eat more vegetables, eat butter instead of margarine, eat four meals a day. When cooking, use virgin olive oil for salad. And if you're really pushed for a snack, cottage cheese in the evening. I should take that advice. Lose 30 or 40 pounds. And not complain about it. That's what people are doing in TripAdvisor. Chefs dish out revenge to TripAdvisor critics, writes Karina Hardgrave. Simple story, one that's warmed over perhaps. But <laughs> pretty easy to find people that I, whose meals I eat and whose places I stay in, you know, ranting back. Paul Treviard, a restaurateur and chef in Killarney, became involved in May when a customer posted on TripAdvisor that he dined in his restaurant four times, this disappointed each occasion. The chef responded, the customer must have the memory of a goldfish to keep coming back. Uh, several restaurants are making themselves known on social media for the wrong reasons. Herb Street's one of them saying something about the uh, silver medal winning boxer that went, caught them into deep shit. U.S. corn bites the dust and drop. Crop failure in the Midwest. The U.S. is going to lead to record-breaking prices per bushel. Danny Forston has a story. Half of the world's corn exports are going to be wiped out by America's worst drought. It's going to affect me and my cornflakes in the morning. What else is happening? The retail sector is feeling the heat. Damien Kybert has the Irish Outlook column in the business section of the Sunday Times. He says that when you look at Vision-Net, credible provider of company information, they saw that 9,420 Irish firms, half of them are on the brink of failure. They can't get credit, cash flow disappearing. Debtors are nearly impossible to collect from. The rot has set in deepest in retailing hospitality, anything to do with bricks and mortar. He says the consumers must be drawn out of the cave. Don't expect that to happen based on government budgets. RTU 2 and 2FM are going to be left in the blocks, Mark Paul, Brian Carey think. Most of the article they write in the Sunday Times is actually based on interviews they've had with Eugene Murray former uh, RTE director. I like him. The problem, Eugene says, too many managers in RTE. But look, this is a bigger problem. And I take it as from Sunday Times Magazine. If kids want to listen or they want to see something, they're going to go to YouTube, not or not Radio 1, or in this case, not 2FM maybe. It's pretty much true that the demographic has shifted. The young demographic, translated into the advertising market, is somewhere else and not in front of screens and maybe not listening to the radio doesn't actually uh, track with uh, where I see a third level because a lot of people can always mention what they've seen or listened to rather in local radio. Walsh's name is top in the ring for boxing jobs. Billy Walsh 
serious delivery. He de de delivers serious results for boxing in Ireland. John Burke says that despite leading him, leading Ireland to a record haul of four medals within one discipline at a single game, he doesn't have a contract. So other people may poach him and uh, he'll probably still stay in Europe but not work for Ireland. It's money, money, respect. Tourists are turning their backs on rural towns. This is Nicola Cook. She's basically saying she's drawing their information from Deloitte, which is releasing information about good news for Dublin hoteliers. But, you know, across the country, B&B Ireland is showing 10% of Ireland's 1,800 approved guest house are going to close the end of this year, mainly because the tourists are just dropping off. And they have no trouble inside that article finding people on tip where I live showing problems in the space. Um, where I live, I uh, encountered a tourist on the street this morning and she could not get a bus out of the town or a coffee shop open at 8 in the morning. Hmm. How Ireland Beat the World, another story about the story of Katie Barnes and the boxers. John Burke writes about high performance clubs and he's basically down to the conclusion many people are making which is you've got to start coaching coaches, getting high performance attitude to clubs and of course taking care of the small clubs would help as well with grants and incentives. Two page on Animation Nation, bucking the trend, a news focus article by Michelle Duvan points out the, the leading lights in Irish animation. Pretty much um, a big story on Brown Bag, Brown Bag Media. Um, Kyle Gaffney and Darrow O'Connell, Paul Young, who we know up in Kilkenny, and The Secret of Kells, Telegale, uh, Giant Creative, Cavalier, Older Media and Jam Media recommended stuff for reading if you're involved in animation and creative industry if you're involved in maybe going digital for your books adrian weckler has some basic faq answers to how they work uh, i strain uh, books you can download uh, updates to the books good read especially for somebody considering implementing ebooks in the curriculum finally me what am i going to consider emma smith has a picture the piece of kit uh CrozierDesigns.com points, uh, points to how to use this lovely little bicycle, the Crozier Kid for Two. Um, it's engineered in Germany, costs 375 uh, sterling, 475 euro, well put together. And I know from personal experience, kids like these things on the back of bikes. Wear your helmets though, mom and dad, if you're going to buy such a thing. Um, checking out the bees in my back garden. Peter Donning, if you're listening or watching on the Sideshow, look how big my balloons are. Aren't they special? You can see more of these things. Flickr.com, Stroke Irish Eyes, and check out, uh, check me out on Twitter at TalkWorld if you're interested as well. I'm Bernie Goldbach. I'm an American Ireland, bringing you the Sunday papers most, most Sundays throughout the year. Bye for now.